I'm wrapping up here with Michelle. And Michelle, I want to, I kind of teased in that last segment. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple of things in the literally very few minutes that we have left. I hear Mark Levin in the evenings very often. He's concerned about a coup coming against Donald Trump. I've heard you reference that a couple of times as well, your concern. Talk to us a little bit about that. I was very concerned back when the story came out that Steve Bannon had been kicked off the National Security Council. And then there were a number of other events that happened that looked like there was a real shift in power in the Trump administration. Because Donald Trump didn't have a big background in public policy, I was worried that people were going to come in and and kind of... um, do a bait and switch. I think that those concerns in some measure have been addressed. And again, there is no perfect scenario, but I love this president and what he's doing. I'm very, very proud of him. He's a tough guy. And he is not going to take the route that Bill Clinton took or that Barack Obama took or that George Bush took of really appeasement mm. toward the North Koreans because the today it's now the son of the fellow who right. was in before. And Donald Trump is apprised of this situation that this guy is very dangerous, very unstable very unpredictable, and he is not about to allow anything negative to happen against the United States or really in the region. And so he is going to take every possible measure. Nothing is off the table. They've made that very clear. And of course, the final thing on the table is the nuclear option. That isn't off the table. He'll take whatever it, whatever it takes to make sure that this fellow is not successful. And he's communicated that. Now, unfortunately, the Chinese, mm-hmm. who have the most leverage, haven't been doing what they should be doing. They could easily be having a, a blockade, so to speak, and economic economic blockade of North Korea. They are North Korea's largest trading partner, and they're not doing that, and they should be. And the president has been calling them on it. But whatever China does, the United States will act, and this president will act accordingly, because he is about America's best interest. This, again, has set the globalists on edge, because Donald Trump, no matter what, is looking out for the national security and economic interests of the United States. And that's it. That is his bottom line. America will be better because of him being president. That's his mindset. But it's also a great result for all of us. I, I hope I communicate that during the course of this message today, that I'm shocked at how happy I've been with what I've seen so far. And again, I really believe that it's because of prayer. Mm -hmm. I totally believe it's based on prayer. He's president because of prayer. The advances we've seen are based on prayer. And that, and I think going forward, that is what we need. And it really comes down to us as believers. What are we going to do? Are we going to seek the Lord? Are we going to cry out for our nation, for our president? That's the key. I'm going back to policy here for just a minute, because there's something I don't want to uh, skip over here in this first hour of recording. And we know there are some Obama holdovers in the administration. As a matter of fact, probably way too many. But do you sense there are some Muslim Brotherhood holdovers in the administration? And and if so, how does one even get rid of them? Well, I have no doubt. Well, there's civil service. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. And under civil service, this is one thing that bothers me. I don't think there should be public employee unions to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I just don't think there should. I'm not against fair and good wages and benefits for people who serve the public. I used to be a public employee, but I do believe that it's antithetical to have a, a public employee union that's at odds with the taxpayers. Yeah. You're supposed to be public servants. And what Barack Obama did with Valerie Jarrett is embed people mm-hmm. all across the federal right. government. And once you're in civil service, you can't be bounced out. It's like virtually impossible. So I think legislation will probably have to be enacted so you can bounce people based upon evidence. We know for a fact that there were brothers in the House Intelligence Committee who were involved in the technical aspect that had to be bounced out because they had access classified information. This is a very serious offense that occurred. So they're out. It takes something almost that bad to get somebody out. So are there people in the Muslim Brotherhood? I believe without a shadow of a doubt there are people who are affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood who are embedded in the United States government. And I again, I think that that's where we need to be in prayer. And I believe that God will honor mm-hmm. those prayers. And so that is something very specific that I would ask of your listeners that they would pray that God would remove people who intend harm for the United States and that he would bring people in who will do good for the United mm-hmm. States. That's very simple. 
also, again, that there would be a steady supply of godly wisdom coming into the ears of our president and those in authority. We need that, and I believe that God has been answering those prayers thus far. Something else you said to me, and this is still in the realm of policy, and that is, and you said another way listeners can pray, is pray that President Trump makes only policy that blesses Israel. In the process, we're going to be blessed as a country. And in the next program, we can talk a little bit about your experience in Israel. But do you feel, I mean, he was the first president to pray at the Western Wall, which was encouraging. That was back in in early June. And his tweet, at the time that he was at the wall, he tweeted to the world, I am here at the wall praying, asking God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. Could there be a better prayer? And that's not a fake tweet. That's who this guy is now. Mm -hmm. And I just think, again, we need to thank God. We need to thank God that he has answered our prayers and that we have a man of faith who is in the office. At least he appears to me a man of faith because he's doing a lot of godly things for this country right now.